the aftermarket has sold electronic ignition as the ultimate reliability upgrade for decades. But today, I'm going to show you why that's not the whole story. Before we get into it, let's be clear that this is all about reliability, not performance. If you're building a race car or just chasing horsepower, that is an entirely different conversation. What exactly made Point's ignition so darn popular in the first place? Well, I think the best way to find out is to have a good look at how they work. All right, so here we've got a very basic Point's ignition setup on the bench. We're gonna start here at the battery. We've got a power wire bringing positive 12 volts to the coil. We come out of the coil on the negative side and go to our distributor. Our distributor is normally grounded by the engine block. Right now, I've got it grounded straight to the battery. So what's actually happening here is when your points contacts are closed, they complete the circuit across this coil and begin to charge it. As the distributor spins, it opens the points. When they open, they break that circuit and the coil discharges. And you can see as I spin the distributor, that is when you get your spark. And electronic ignition does a very similar thing to this. It's just all done inside a solid state ignition module so you eliminate a lot of these moving parts. As you can see, there's not much going on in there, and that's why the word of the day is simplicity. More on that in a minute. Now at this point, you're probably wondering, if points ignition is so good, then why did the OEMs turn on it so viciously? Now the first reason, and probably the most obvious, is to reduce maintenance. There's no escaping the fact that points ignition is a regular maintenance item. As those contact pads inevitably wear, you will have to go back in and readjust them so that your dwell does not get too far out of spec. And of course, you may also have to file your points periodically to keep those contacts clean and ensure that they conduct electricity properly. They were also heavily driven by the goal to improve performance, economy, and emissions. For performance, electronic ignition does have a distinct advantage. You can push a lot more energy through your electronic ignition system than you can with the point system. The higher energy would burn out the contact pads of the points much quicker. That's why back in the old days of hot rodding, they used dual point distributors from manufacturers like Mallory. This essentially doubles the amount of energy you can transfer through your distributor because you have twice as much contact surface for that energy. Now, when it comes to fuel efficiency and emissions, it's a simple matter of accuracy and consistency. And of course, this inadvertently helped performance too. These electronic ignition systems are far more accurate than points simply because they do not have as many mechanical variables. And anytime you have more efficient spark, you will have more efficient combustion. And anytime you have more efficient combustion, you will have better fuel economy, better emissions, and more power. Now that's not to say that points ignition is not capable of very efficient combustion. It definitely is. But because of those variables we mentioned, it is a lot harder to obtain. And when you're a manufacturer trying to produce potentially millions of vehicles with efficient and consistent combustion, electronic ignition is your clear winner. And if you've ever gotten the sales pitch for electronic ignition, then I'm sure at least a couple of these points have come up. And that makes sense because it makes for a very compelling argument. But like I said in the beginning of this video, that's not quite the whole story. It's very easy to win a comparison if you know what you're doing. The trick is to focus only on the areas where your desired winner has the advantage. And this has been taking place unintentionally with electronic ignition for a very long time. No one talks about the advantages of points ignition. The first and probably the biggest advantage of points ignition is simplicity. With just a little time spent getting familiar with a points ignition system, you can diagnose and repair them very quickly. And that's because they rely heavily on very simple mechanical concepts and even simpler wiring. The cold hard truth in life is that everything breaks eventually so it might as well be easy to fix. And as you'll soon see, simplicity is a hidden force behind most of the advantages of points ignition, such as ease of maintenance. Because there's not a lot going on in a points ignition system, maintenance really isn't that big of a deal once you have some experience. And proper maintenance really just boils down to periodic inspections to make sure that your gap is still in spec and resetting if necessary, as well as replacing or filing your point contacts when they do eventually wear out. A good tip, if you feel like you're burning through those contact points a little too quickly, pay special attention to your condenser. The condenser limits the arcing between the points contacts, which greatly extends the life of your points. If the condenser goes out, your points won't be far behind it. Our next point, also driven by simplicity, is that points ignition is very predictable, and predictability 
means reliability. See, while electronic ignition doesn't usually go out or give any maintenance troubles, eventually it will. And when it does, you will find yourself in a serious pickle, usually because an electronic ignition module has randomly gone out, or 100 small wires have fused into one abomination that looks a lot like my brain after trying to watch a Fast and Furious movie. Seriously, I should have just dropped the pretense and done meth or something. Unlike electronic ignition, points will usually give you some form of early warning before they fail. That will be a hard misfire under high engine load, such as climbing a hill in your highest gear. That means it's time to check your gap or your contact surface. But here's the unsung beauty of points. When you do have a problem, all you need is a screwdriver, something to dress your contact surfaces with. My personal favorite for this is a small nail file with the tip cut off. Just be sure to get one with serrations cut into it, not one with a sandpaper-like finish. Any type of sandpaper leaves impure particles in your contact surface, which causes them to burn out even faster. And it's never a bad idea to bring along a spare set of points and a condenser. With these things, I can pretty much guarantee that points ignition will get me home. And that is where real dependability comes from. And lastly, points are cheap especially when you compare them to an electronic ignition conversion. It doesn't really matter which way you go, electronic ignition conversions are quite expensive. By the time you figure in the cost of the module itself, the suppression core wires, and in some cases you'll have to have a special coil too. All of these costs add up, and once they do, points ignition starts to look pretty good, because around here we're all about cheap reliability. So we've heard some pros and some cons of points ignition and electronic, but what is the bottom line? Well, I think if I had to sum it all up, I would say that there's no arguing that electronic ignition has a lot of distinct advantages. However, if we're talking about upgrading from points to electronic, I just don't see the economic value. Because as good as electronic ignition is, it does have a few distinct disadvantages, especially when it comes to the areas of diagnostics and repairs. Points ignition was meant to be fixed by the consumer, and electronic ignition was meant to be fixed by the dealer. So the next time you find yourself staring down at a set of points ignition, keep your billfold where it is, take a breath, and give them a chance. Because if you do, I think you'll find that the ultimate reliability comes from keeping it simple. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, it helps a lot, and drop a comment down below, let me know what you think about points ignition, would you still run them on your car in 2025? And stick around because I've got a bunch of cool stuff coming up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.